the recent debates to adopt a minimum wage for skilled and unskilled labor in the country continues to draw mixed reactions from a number of people, with a section of the public saying the policy, if adopted, will discourage investors, while others affirm that it will protect employees from exploitation. Last week, Cabinet proposed to have new monthly minimum wage for workers at 136,000 shillings. This is expected to end the apparent exploitation of low-end workers, including domestic workers and security guards who earn as little as 50,000 per month. Minimum wage is the lowest amount a worker can legally be paid for his or her work. We suggest that our public policy should... Democratic Party President Nobat Mao says there is need to undertake a comprehensive study on the wage trends in different sectors of the economy by analyzing employment trends, costs of living, and the wage trends by profession and geographical regions. Some young people who work for a cleaning company, and they told me their monthly salary is 80,000. And they, are, they have to go to work every day so it is those people who need a minimum wage so that the moment I invite you to work for me, I cannot pay you below a certain amount. And that requires Parliament to put in place that minimum wage. Mao insists that the issue of equality is very important when addressing the minimum wage aspect. This should prioritize the casual laborers, including security guards, domestic workers, among others. We, we want a merit-based system in Uganda. I'm not asking that people should go and start distributing things to whoever is lucky. But there must be equal opportunities. That is, that's the most important thing. Mao further expressed concern over the current highly indebted economy and its high dependence on the foreign loans. We are spending the oil money in advance. Precisely, this is how we are spending it, by paying the high interest rates on the amount of money we are borrowing. I do not know how those of you who are young are going to be in this country, but this is one way of a country becoming enslaved. If we don't balance, and the worst thing is that the money we are borrowing, we are not putting it in a lot of tangible investments. To achieve the target set in the country's National Development Plan 2, the government is looking at heavily investing in transport and energy infrastructure as well as security. In the budget framework paper for 2017-2018, all ministries will have to concede at least 10% of their budgets to fund critical ongoing and new road and rail projects. The second biggest allocation on the budget is the repayment of the debt, which stands at 2.6 trillion shillings. Report by Alozia Satwine for Urban TV.